Down here in central Mexico, it's like 90 degrees. I just turned the fan off so we don't have a bunch of noise and it's gonna start cooking in here pretty fast. You had a vision here, you knew what you wanted and the edit's just not working. Is it your tools? Is it something you did? Do you need to reset your mind and change your perspective? Do you need to wait? Sometimes you do need to wait. In fact, let me show you one image here. This image here, I recently posted to my page. I took this photo over a decade ago and I never used, really it just didn't ever do anything amazing for me. And with the recent growth of my black and white and having tools that do more like black room, that do more than just a basic black and white edit that can give me more atmospheric tools, I came back and I edited. This. I really like this image. I really wasn't afraid of shadows. And this goes along with some of the themes I've been talking about about how you need to focus on shadows first. And if you're on my groups and stuff on Facebook, I'll link those in the comments. You see me talking about this as well. So make sure you check those out. But this image for 10 years was nothing. And I came back to it and I said, you know what, maybe I can do something with this image now that my editing has advanced more. It doesn't matter so much what tool you use as long as you have the best tools for you and as long as your mind is always open to being creative with those tools. Paul actually sent me this image and you can see here, I'm gonna switch over, you can see we have a raw file. Paul was saying, look, I'm trying to edit this I went in the black room, like it's just not coming out. I don't know where to go. And I get questions about things like Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets a lot. Like I need a list of what to edit with. And I struggle with this because it's hard to make a list to tell you as an artist what to edit with. When I make tools, it's very intentional that I make them so they can stack, like with presets and mods. In my actions, everything's very vertical. You can mod layers. If you look at Blackroom or Alchemist or Loomist for editing tone or my emulsion for things like the platinum effects, they're extremely nuanced. When you're done, you don't get the same look I did. They're designed to give a ton of different combinations. So what I'm doing is making the building blocks to getting there easier. I'm gonna go right here and the first thing we're gonna do is our raw file. I just double clicked the CR2 file, okay? And this is straight raw that we're looking at. We're in camera raw. I didn't even import it into Lightroom. Normally I would edit in Lightroom, but in the case of working with this image that Paul graciously sent me to kind of give him some ideas and to demonstrate to you guys, I didn't. Obviously there's a lot of dynamic range. It's super black down here and it's super light up here. And I'll just use the exposure slider just as a test on a raw file to see how much I can actually pull out. You see, if I drag down and I go down to three stops under, it's still really white here, but we are pulling detail. So there might be some tiny areas that are truly full clip. That is two five fives, zone 10 maxed out. You can't recover it without painting it in. You guys have seen probably some of the recent videos I did about how to restore highlights that are truly clipped using pixel painting techniques. I don't think we'll need to do that here today. And then if we look down at these shadow areas, you can see that I can also bring detail. There's going to be noise, but I can bring detail even in these deep shadow areas. So what I'm going to do is reset this. I'm going to show you two ways to edit this image. And I think this is important. I'm just going to click open on the raw file, which is just going to bring my image into Photoshop. Okay. In this case, I'm going to go straight to Blackroom. So I'm going to run the Blackroom master tool, which is going to give me a basic black and white conversion and put everything in place. The other thing it's going to do is much like Loomis. Loomis actually gives more control because you can specifically select all the zones, but Blackroom allows me to open the zonal map here and it puts a real time live zone map on, right? And you can see if you look down here, we're all the way down in zone zero, but not in that bottom 20% truly clipped. There's not a lot of true black and we have a lot of zone 9 and zone 10 up in those clouds right but you can see there's not a lot of actual white pixels which would represent the upper end of the scale that true clipped on the scale a couple problems i'm seeing in editing this image let me hide the zone map and the first thing i'm actually going to do on this is i'm going to run a light foundry in black room you have all these actions so it's already converted to black and white when you run the base action and nothing i'm doing here in black room is something that you couldn't do manually. You could build all these layers, you could do curves layers, you could do dynamic range layers. Blackroom is just giving us a building box that we can stack and mix and quickly reset and move things around. And it just makes high 
in black and white editing faster and easier. The first problem that we have in this image is we have to try and bring something out in it. An image needs a subject. And this can be difficult with C-type images, sweeping landscapes. So the first thing I would remind you guys is think about your subject when you take the photo. Is it the foreground? Is it the waves? There's not one big crashing wave here that draws my eye, right? It's just kind of an open sea. These clouds are really cool. They're really great. But there's not really one that I'm specifically drawn to. So there's kind of a lack of a focus subject here. If I have this situation, we have extreme dynamic range, so we got to pull that out. But we also kind of have to give it a certain grid, a certain atmosphere, because right now I feel like, well, the rocks are dark. Are they the subject? The sky is dark. Is it the subject? Remember, we always want to be thinking, what's our focal point? What's the one subject, the primary, everything else? Everything else is supporting cast. I think Paul handled the exposure overall in a fairly balanced way, because if he'd made this shadow area much lighter, we, we would have gone into full clipping in these clouds. So I talk about this a lot with single image HDR, natural HDR presets, things like that. If you expose well, you're able to pull all this out. Okay, so here's our black room. Let's go to here and just run the clean HDR. This is a foundry mix. It's going to mix a bunch of these other ones. And if you look down at the bottom here, you're going to see it's just adding in layers, moving things around, doing all the heavy lifting for us. And boom, we have this here. Okay, it's better. In fact, if we look down here, you can see that we're bringing in some grit with the ice plate down here. The beauty of this is after any of these run, whether you manually add a, an effect, a black and white filter, etc. in here, or do a foundry mix, you have control of everything. So what it's doing is making it easier to manage, but now you can come in and do this. So for example, I can go to my curve layers here, which are on top of my opaque pixel layers, and I can start playing with them. I can say, hey, let's turn these two off. Yeah, let's turn these two top ones. Let's turn off the lift light and the filament curve, because it actually brings a little more contrast into those clouds. But the downside I'm seeing is the rocks are still really dark. Let's turn off the ice plate and actually add the HDR base mod a second time. So if I click this, it's gonna edit our base mod layer and add more dynamic range. Now we're getting this more kind of dynamic rangey intense look. So it's kind of cool because now the texture of the rocks is becoming relevant. Yes, if we zoom in, there's some grain there, but those were super dark. We're gonna have that. I can now come in here and say, well, let's do a red 25 filter. And what that's gonna do is like a red 25 filter on film, it's gonna bring down those blues and give me a little more intense. And you can see just by clicking the action, it added that in with all my other curves, layers, and filters. And if I turn off the green 11 filter and just leave this one on, it's not bad. Okay, now we're getting something to where Sure, we could burn and dodge and manipulate this, but now we're getting some texture. We're getting some surface. We're showing a seascape in a way that has something that pops. Here is what you want to think about. And this goes back to the question of people asking me, Gavin, like, what tool do I use? The edit's not working. If an edit's not working, there's something you need to tweak. Or you have an image. And it's okay to tell yourself this. Sometimes you take an image, and the image just isn't that amazing. And sometimes you have to be really honest. The greatest photographers are honest with themselves. If I take a lot of images, normally if I take an image, if it's really good, I'll spend a lot of time editing it because I know I can just keep tweaking. I'll start in Lightroom with a preset with some manual tweaks. I'll go to Photoshop. I'll use Actions. I'll use Loomis. I'll use Blackroom. Then I'll do some manual stuff like maybe burning and dodging and really start bringing it out, right? But that's if it's a really good image. If I edit an image for 10 minutes and nothing's coming to life, like the one I showed you at the beginning of this video, if I do that, I've gotten to the point where I'll tell myself, you know what, this isn't working. So either the image isn't really that great or my vision is, visualization wasn't right and my mind isn't in the right state for it right now. But as our tools get better and better, just like that image I showed you that I came back after 10 years and Blackroom now makes it so much easier for me to just tweak, tweak, tweak. When I came back to that image with my technique that I've improved over the past decade and also with tools that allow me to tinker around with the texture and the tone in a little bit different ways, it allowed me to say, hey, my visualization is more shadow focused now, like I've talked about recently. And what can I do with the latest tools that I have to improve that? Okay, so we're going to edit this another way. I've opened the raw file again. You know, I get people to say, oh, I only edit in Photoshop. I only edit in Lightroom, etc." And I'm always doing videos saying, no, I edit in both because one does one thing and one does another. And I want to demonstrate that here. 
and that it can help us to edit better in situations like this. Here's our raw file, we're right back to it. I have in camera raw, right? I've opened in camera raw. This would be the same if I did it in Lightroom and then did a control or command E and opened in Photoshop. In this case, I'm just working right in camera raw. I'm gonna run something like HDR Silver 2 from the Silver 4 presets. And you could do a manual conversion on this as well. Now, because I'm gonna go into Blackroom and Photoshop, I'm gonna use the add color for Blackroom which is another preset within Silver. What this is doing is it's leaving all the tone and dynamic range edits that I just did to this image, but it's restoring the color channels so that when I go into Photoshop, I have those. So I'm retaining that edit, but also retaining my color, okay? Now I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna run Black Room on this again now. So we're gonna do a side by side. You can see that we're starting with way more dynamic range. So now I can run Black Room on this and it's gonna give me the base black and white conversion. I've got my layers, I can tinker around with this, but I'm gonna make it easy rather than go manually through. And there's nothing wrong. I, I tell people the best way to find the great edit, if you wanna tinker with black and white filters, just add one, right? Let's say, hey, add a red 25 and see what it does. Do you like it? Well, if you don't, just click it, right? And delete it, that's okay. That's the beauty of having great building blocks in our editors. But I'm gonna go ahead and run the Clean HDR Foundry Mix, which is gonna run, again, a bunch of these actions just like we did on the other one. So now we do the clean HDR and we got this. Now it's getting pretty intense. I'm gonna turn off those same two layers, the light curve and the filament curve, so that I maintain kind of some intensity. And I'm gonna add that red 25 layer to bring this in. It's, it's almost getting like too intense. What we have to focus on with this is our subject is the sea really. Is it the sea or is it the clouds? The problem is they're both good, but even though they're both beautiful, they both kind of draw the eye. So if I go here, I can come in and I can now tinker with these layers, right? And this is the beauty of actions and all this vertical editing. Nothing's flattened or anything, it's all there. So I can say, hey, let's, let's put, let's turn off the green 11, these layers on top that were part of the foundry mix, and let's turn on, let's add this red 25 that we just added with the action here. Now we're bringing some more into that sky. Okay, that's really good. Maybe I wanna turn off the ice plate and just decide, do I want that much grittiness or no? It's kind of adding some noise, right? I could, if you see, if I turn off my base mods, which is where it did the HDR effect from that foundry mix, again, I have much more shadow, but shadow is not bad. I've been talking about that a lot lately. Maybe what I'll do is take this base mods layer and just turn it down. So if I turn it way up, super kind of gritty, high dynamic range-ish. If I turn it down, I still have texture, but there's a moodiness now to that texture. Okay, so I can determine the balance. With a preset, it's a little harder. You can see that when I edited with the preset, I quickly got a pretty good process. What that did is by editing directly on that raw file and having full access to all that information, I know if we open a 16-bit TIFF image from Lightroom, from Camera Raw, from a raw file, technically it's non-destructive. But there's something about doing those basic tonal edits initially on the raw file, give yourself a starting point, then go to Photoshop that I find tends to make the process easier and give better results. Okay, so now let's look at the one we did here that we didn't edit in camera raw or in Lightroom at all. It was a straight raw file and we went straight to black room. Here's the one we did where I did edit. And so you can see that there's a bit more brightness here. The sky might even be a little too bright but there's more texture in those clouds too. And if we zoom in, there's still some grain, right? So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna do a grain raw classic level one, which is just gonna add a little bit of grain into that. So it's gonna take, and we can, we can control it down here. We can turn it on and off, control the opacity, et cetera. You can see if I zoom in here, there's a little bit of artifacting because we had an image that had a lot of darkness to it, even in the sky. You can see that kind of artifacting. What adding a little bit of grain does as it kind of smooths it out and makes it feel a little bit more filmic and organic. So now we have this image that we've gone from here to here. Our dynamic range is looking really good. The main thing I would want to do here, I think, is just work with the cloud. Probably just do a little bird and dodge. So if I do a, a shift control alt E and make a stamp visible layer, which basically just takes everything we've done and puts it onto its own layer here, I would probably just finish this up with a little bit of burn and dodge to our burn tool right there. And we're just gonna take this and you can see if we just do this carefully, there's a little bit of clipping here, it's a little tough. What I'm gonna do with burning and I can switch it up here to sh highlights, shadows or midtones. Again, something I cover in my more advanced workshops, uh, but you can see I can kind of bring down, I don't want those highlight details 
to be too much. So I'm burning highlights a little, but do this very gently, very carefully, right? Then I'm gonna burn shadows down a little bit. This also use carefully, but with shadow burning, I can now bring a little bit more intensity into these clouds, right? So I've done most of the work with Black Room, but now I'm doing a little bit of localized adjustment and just carefully kind of click, click, click burning to bring texture into this, as you can see here. And yeah, we're definitely starting to get a little bit of grain. So we might want to finish this up with some noise reduction, some sharpening, etc., to really balance it out. But you can see here, and then I could actually dodge. I could switch to the dodge tool. If I dodge highlights, it's going to act like some backlighting, right? Again, turn the opacity, the exposure of this way low, like to 10, 15%. And I could use it to add even more contrast to these clouds. So the difference between the blacks and the white. Same with the foreground. A great black and white has great texture. Most of that was brought out by the black room edit. But by doing it here a little bit more selectively, I can bring a little further out. Okay, so now I'm almost making these cool rocks with the water flowing over them my focal point. And then I could finish by saying, okay, if those are my focal point, Let's crop a little bit. Let's make this a little more panoramic so we don't have so much space up top. And I've taken this image that I wasn't sure quite where to look. And now I feel like, okay, we have a strong edit. We have really rich shadows. We have great texture. So if we look here to where we started on the raw file, right? We got this far and we could have done more, of course. You don't have to use a raw edit before you go into Photoshop or Blackroom. But by taking that two-stage approach, I do think that we made it a little easier, right? We edited it in Camera Raw, we did our Blackroom, and then we just did a quick burn and dodge to kind of control those tones and details a little bit better and make it work. The key to an edit is not having a list telling you a map of what tool to use. The key to an edit is having an open mind. Have your visualization, and here's the path you wanna take, but be willing to swerve and experiment a little bit along that path. If you look at great images, they start in camera, they start with a great subject, they start with great exposure, but then they're edited to really draw attention to where you want. So as the maker of this image, Paul needs to say, well, what is my subject? I don't know Paul's specific vision on this. I might look at this and say, you know what, I wish I had something that was a little more distinct. I wish maybe there was a boat. I wish maybe there was some kind of an object, maybe a sunset, something that was a specific object of desire in the image where I knew the eye was going to go because every image needs one subject. That said, Paul could easily counter with me and say, well, my subject is the sea. My only question is that whenever we make an image, we need to ask ourselves what the subject is, because if we do, we're going to build everything around the subject and it's going to make our image better. But I think in the end, we've taken an image that was difficult, that had a ton of dynamic range. It's a tough edit on an image like this. And we've pulled it out and we've made something that has texture, that has beauty, and that really shows the majesty and the power of the ocean. Okay, that's all for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you guys are doing black and white, go over and I'll put links in the bottom to silver, to black room. Whatever tool you're using, just make it work for you. But if you wanna check out some of these tools, I put a lot of years into saying, hey, how can we make our edits better? How can we make our building blocks better? And I think you guys will enjoy these tools. If, if you love black and white, check those out. All right, we will see you guys soon. Peace.